What's going on guys? Welcome back to this video. Today's video will be Hack the Box. And we're go going to start Intro to Binary Exploitation Track. So in this track, we're going to learn buffer overflow techniques in addition to binary other binary exploitation techniques. So it's going to be a good track to follow through if you want to learn how to exploit binaries and if you, if you want to stand on firm grounds when it comes to buffer overflows. So first we're going to start the Jeeves challenge. So Jeeves consists of first, the first process will be to start the instance. As you can see, this is the IP and this is the port to connect to the instance. And then we have the files. If you download the files, you will be presented with the executable file to want to exploit. So heading over to my machine and here ls file Jeeves. And as you can see, it's 64 bit executable file. And it's by executable. It means it might have um, buffer overflow protections. We can check for that. Check sec dash dash file Jeeves. You have the latest version of pawn tools. Checking for a new version of pawn tools. Okay, let's give it some time. And while this is running, let's now run the binary in Ghidra. So running the binary in Ghidra, we go to the main function and we take a look at the code. So we have here the main function. In the main function, there are a couple variable declarations. The first one is the local 48, which will be the variable responsible for accepting the user input. As you can see here, we have printf hello goods, hello, uh, good sir, may I have your name, and then it gets or it prompts the user to uh, enter the input. The input is stored in variable local 48, as you can see here. And next we have printf uh, statement, which will welcome the user with the name that they entered. And then we have an if statement. This statement is all based on a completely different variable, which is the local underscore C. It is declared as an integer. Now there is local for C, as you can see, it is checked whether it has this value. If it does, as you can see, we enter the if statement. The condition is ex the condition is true, and the code under the if statement will be executed. Local underscore eighteen, another variable that gets, as you can see, that got uh, declared up there. It allocates, as you can see, around two fifty six bytes. This is in hex, in memory, and then. It opens or stores the flag, as you can see, it opens the file named flag.txt, which assumingly contains the flag. The flag gets stored under this variable. And then it reads the, as you can see here, guys, the contents of the flag into the variable local underscore 18, which is supposedly 256 bytes. And then here, printf, please, pleased to make your acquaintance. Here's a small gift. So regardless of what happened, under the if statement, the if statement is kind of impossible to get into. Why? Because the user has only control over one variable, which is the local 48. Now, no matter what we enter in local 48, the if statement is not going to get executed, which means we're not going to have the flag printed. We're not going to have access to the flag. So what we're going to do here, what we have to do, we have to find out the distance in bytes between the input that we process into the program and the local underscore c if we are able to narrow down the distance in bytes we might be able to find out how many bytes there is uh, or how many bytes needed to actually reach the local c variable let's take a look at this so if we go click on local 48 as you can see here we have the assembly code scrolling up this is the main function as you can see, this is the local underscore C, which is the variable that we need to reach. It is under the offset, as you can see in hex C, 0 C, and the local 48, which is the input, it is 48. Now, to calculate the distance, what we can do, we can convert both into um, um, decimal and calculate the distance in bytes. Simply, you can go here. Looks like I'm going to do this. Uh, let's close this down. All right, let's do this here. Way quicker. 
So from x to decimal. Okay. So we have 0c, which is 12. Now this is the offset of the variable we want to reach. And the user input is uh, 48, maybe. 48. Yes, 48. So 72. 72 minus 12 is 60, which means we need 60 bytes. We need 60 bytes. Now my virtual machine is not responding now. Okay. So look at C, the distance between the variable we want to reach, which is local underscore C, and the distance between the uh, variable local underscore c and the user input is 60 bytes now is there another way to calculate this of course we have to use a debugger so we're going to launch now gdp and take a look at this so gdp and here we launch now the gdp let's take a look at the main function so this is the main function now in order to calculate in order to uh, calculate the distance first we need to make a breakpoint a breakpoint before the user input so let's see here so scrolling down we see the gets so the breakpoint should come right after the get function the get function will accept the user input we need to take a look at this stack okay after the user input is processed. Why? Because after we enter the uh, name or the user input, uh, we're going to be able to see the location in the stack or the offsets for the user input and for the variable that's controlling the if statement. So exactly, we need to enter the breakpoint here. So we highlight this address here. It's plus 53. So we scroll down and we say breakpoint asterisk main function plus 53 now the breakpoint at 121e the address scrolling up this is the address now the breakpoint is set to be here now we run the program now may i have your name let's enter something not to overflow the program so let's enter my name and here we take a look at the stack so our objective is to reach this okay we want to um, go back here we want to make the variable here local underscore c to be equal to this string okay to be able to do that we need to calculate the distance between this offset and this offset if we are able to calculate the distance we're going to overwrite all this distance with some characters and when we reach this offset we're going to add this so that when the program runs and checks the local underscore c it's going to be equal to this value so now it's clear what we can do you can take this address another way is to take this address and go to hex converter so you got this value look it ends with 16 right let's go back and take this value or the offset of this why this? Let's go back to Ghidra. So now the local underscore C, this is the variable. It is at offset 0xc. And if we go back here and calculate this offset in decimal. Um, no. So it's 72. So now, as you can see, guys, these numbers were actually, we, went, we, we reached this number earlier when we subtracted, we manually subtracted this one, local 48. Uh, which is the user, which controls the user input from local underscore c the distance was 60 and here if we subtract this 72 minus the previous one which was 60 we will get again 
which was 12 we will get again 60 so that's the distance between the user input which is controlled by local 48 and the variable local 40c we want to reach this distance with numbers when we reach the local underscore c we're gonna put this value so now it's clear what to do let's craft the exploit code so on a new tab so in nano exploit.py so let's first from pawn import we will use pawn tools it's very common to use pawn tools in buffer overflow vulnerabilities and now let's type don't forget that we need to exploit the binary by connecting to the machine here so we need to take these parameters into consideration so let's first define a process or executable or a target target will as you can see guys launch netcut okay and then we will append to the target the parameters the IP and the port we will use send line and from here first we have the IP address Okay, uh, no need for the comma, and then we have the port. And we need to cancel this. So, netcat IP and port. Now the payload. The payload will equal to A's, let's say, 60 A's. We need 60 bytes, that's the distance. Okay, and now we need to add this to the payload this value so this is a hexadecimal value so in order to add this into the string of 60 a's we have first to convert it into an appropriate encoding so let's first define a new variable byte uh, payload equal so p64 which will actually um you know if you go here this will produce the hexadecimal value of the payload in bytes so this is the actual value here we want to produce want to first uh, take the byte value so we use b64 and then here we say um, the value itself so this is it we have zero here and then we got we got to convert this into an appropriate uh, encoding because if we add this, this is a byte, and it cannot be concatenated with the uh, string of 60 A's. It's going to produce an error. So we have to first um, take the byte value and convert it into a string with an appropriate encoding. So the final payload will be payload equal uh, payload, which is 60 A's, plus byte payload dot decode this will convert it into a string and the appropriate encoding will be iso not utf i tried utf but it did not work so we're going to use iso so what would what would this do it will first add the 60 a's here and concatenate them into the output of this decoding process which will decode the bytes into a string so now the final thing is to send this payload through the target variable. So target or send line the final payload. And then print target receive until. So here we want to print everything there is to print in the if statement. We want to get the flag. So the flag ends with a single brace. So we're going to add this here. So to double quotes and here we have one brace let's see how where when i'm gonna find this okay this one let me try my luck and see if this will work missing parentheses in print yeah because this is a python 3 so we're gonna have to add extra parentheses
clear. Yep, yeah, it's kind of scary. So we connected to the target. Uh, here. Hello, good sir. May I have your name? Hello. These are the 60 A's we have sent. And this is the payload concatenated. And then as you can see, we receive the flag. This is it. We entered, we actually entered the if statement here. So we grab the flag and see if it works. Um, easy. Yeah, kind of between easy and medium. Submit. So that was it, guys. If you want more notes on how to export buffer overflows, you can uh, grab the subscribe to my channel membership tier number three to get access to the cybersecurity notes, including the buffer overflows. So that was it, guys. I hope you find that I hope you find that helpful and I will see you in the next video.